You know what? Every week before I do a show, I, I struggle to find my inspiration. And it was I discovered this morning, I was putting on this shirt and I decided, you know what? This is a good topic for today. Um, and rather than calling it Nerd Week, I'm going to call it Geek Week. So let's get uh, started with this week's show. And it's going to be a little bit different. I seem to say that every week anymore here. But um, the show this week is going to give you a little insight as to maybe how I look at data and how I bring uh, the data to you every week. So let's get started. Hey there, it's Les Solgrove. This is Simply Des Moines Market Values for week 30, 2024. <clears throat> we are beyond the halfway point. We, uh, it's just amazing how time seems to fly once you get into August and July here. So uh, the end of July comes here in a couple of days and state fair starts here in a week or so. <clears throat> and it just seems like kids will be back to school before we know it. So let's talk a little bit this week about how I analyze the data and I've aptly uh, titled this week's show, it's Geek Week. So let's jump right in and see what's uh, going on. So uh, this is normally what you would see uh, from me. So um, when I say this week's show is a little different, I'm not kidding. You know, normally you're going to see something like this, which has got you know, a graphic showing year over year and, and week over week and uh, kind of being able to draw some analysis. Uh, maybe I'll show you something like this once in a while, which is a breakdown of the subcategories of existing homes and condos and new homes and new condos and townhomes. Um, it's not going to be like that this week. Let's uh, show you what I'm talking about. This is raw data here. And I know I'm risking uh, this week's show big time because there are many of you that are just, you know, you're visual people and you maybe don't get into the uh, analysis of it. But I, I would hope that you would pay attention to this show this week because I think it's going to give you some insight as to really how I look at the data every time I go in and update the, the market uh, information here. I will tell you that I update market uh, information on uh, on a weekly basis. I used to do it every day for the last, oh gosh, since 2008. Uh, I don't know how many years that is. Um, used to do that on a daily basis. And in 2024, I decided to switch over to weekly. And that caused me to have to rebuild all of the graphics uh, to accommodate a weekly input form here. And agents ask me and people ask me all the time, well, why don't you just automate this? Well, here's why. This is the whole idea. Um, this is th what you're looking at here on the screen is just a portion of my data input. It's basically, um, you know, it's looking from May 5th all the way to date. And this is just happens to be what the screen would look like on my computer. It's an Excel spreadsheet. So, yeah, I'm old school in that regard. But you know what? It works well for what I'm doing here. Uh, the line across the bottom in blue indicates uh, the the last this past week's data. So July 28th here, and I, my head's just barely in the screen or in front of it there. Um, but July 28th, which is today, this is the data that I entered into the MLS or into the system from the MLS, and this is uh, how I calculate and and produce the graphics. So to give you an idea, let's just take you down the line here. This is all home data here. So this is uh, the number of homes tr currently totally for sale in this in the residential category of of uh, the MLS right now, it's currently 3,489 homes on the market. And what I do every time I, I enter a little piece of data, and I'm looking at this from uh, the perspective of a spreadsheet, I kind of look back and I get an idea of what the graphics are going to look like before I even uh, look at the graphics or even put a show together. So, for example, here. You know, we know that inventory has been growing the last few weeks, and uh, the, the May 5th date is not a magic date. It's just, again, it's just what happens to be able to, to be seen on the screen uh, when I'm putting this data in. But it kind of tells the story here that from the 1st of May or May 5th to date, you can see that we're starting to see a, a pretty gradual increase in inventory. It started out with 3,100 built to 32, 33, 34, 3,500 and eight last week, and we've dropped off a little bit this week. Um, the next line across here is the median list price. And again, you know, we started off back in, you know, uh, 10 weeks ago or however many weeks ago that is, 369.90, and, and we are currently at 369,000. So overall, you know, that tells me that, yeah, while we've had some ups and downs, 
that tells me that we're starting to see you know, some stability in the list prices. So we're not seeing pricing uh, of homes coming on the market going up or down. Um, the pending sale category here, column, uh, again, you can kind of see a pattern here where back in the 1st of May, we were uh, our inventory of pending sales <clears throat> on the books were currently around 2,400, and we're currently now around 2,081, almost 2,100 homes uh, under contract waiting to close, and that's been a steady decline. You look at this graphic here, or this column here, the homes for sale, where it's increasing, and the sale pendings where it's decreasing, and that's where I tell you every week, you know, it's not so much that we're getting more homes on the market, it's, it's more the fact that uh, there are fewer offers being accepted. And we'll talk about that over here on the 30-day sale pace uh, column in just a second. As far as pricing goes, you know, the median pending price, this is not the price that the home actually sells for, but this is the, the price of the homes that are actually going under contract um, on a, on a uh, weekly basis here. Um, you know, you can see that the, the median list price was 369, but the, the price of the homes that are actually selling are considerably lower than that, but yet they're still higher than the overall median sale price of 300,000, which we'll talk about that in a second here. But this tells you kind of a story here. Uh, if you look at this all the way back to that May 5th date, 315, 250 to 315, yeah, there's been a little bit of fluctuation, but most of the time the home buyers are buying right in that sweet spot. So uh, I look at this data and I go, you know what, if, if I were taking a listing on the market right now around that 300,000 or $315,000 price point, chances are pretty good. That's the buyers that are up right out there that are buying right now. So it's median. So half the sales are above, half the sales are below. But this is the middle point. This is kind of the sweet spot. The next column over is the days on market. And, you know, no surprise there. You can kind of see that uh, going into the month of May, we started to see a little bit of a slowdown as we got towards June. So days on market started to pick up a little bit, uh, pick up meaning getting longer. And then uh, we went into June, and you started to see this days on market uh, drop off just a little bit. But really, consistently for the past month, we've seen just 13 days on the market pretty steady there. All right, I told you we talk about median sale price. Um, a few weeks back here, we were at a, at a record high of $307,000 on a specific week. That was one of those situations where something in the high end, uh, or a, a bunch of it in the high end, all of a sudden was selling and close and that caused that median sale price to jump. We don't see a lot of jumps when you see when you're talking median uh, numbers here, especially when you're looking at a lot of data. Um, you know, when there were uh, you know a couple thousand homes on the market, it takes a pretty good chunk to move that needle on a median um, uh, graphic here. So when that jumped to 307, it was worth noting and I actually went back and I looked at that and I said, was there a mistake somewhere in the data that that caused that number to jump? And there really wasn't. It wasn't like I, I put in a bunch of sale prices with, uh, you know, maybe an extra zero, making them millions instead of hundreds of thousands. It wasn't anything like that at all. Um, it just was that, it just happened to be that week's um, anomaly there. And that's, you know, it's back down to around that 300,000. So uh, again, if you look back in the 1st of May, we were at 286. And what is very typical in the spring and early summer market, we do see our sale prices start to go up. Uh, but we've been fairly steady this last four weeks at $300,000. So, again, if you look across, $369.9 is the median list price, $315 is the median pen price, and the um, median sale price is at $300,000 mark right there. And this is the one that the media likes to look at. This is the median sale price. So if they would have called me back on, on June 30th and said, hey, what's up? How come uh, prices have gone up uh, exponentially? Um, I would have looked back and said, you know what, that's uh, a little out of the norm, but it was just an anomaly based on uh, a lot of the spring market. Probably some new construction in there that, that caused that because they're typically the the uh, the ones that tips the scale a little bit higher uh, on those pricing. The 30-day sale pace. This is a very, very valuable and interesting graphic or, or set of data that I look at each week. And this isn't a graphic. It's the data I look at every week. And you can kind of see, again, uh, this kind of gives you the idea of whether the market is slowing down or picking up. We were at 1,200 and some the, in early May, uh, dropped to 1,100 some, down under 1,100, uh, back up, and now back just down under 1,100. So you can see that pace of sales. These are the number of offers going under contract in a rolling 30-day period. 
um, those are starting to slow down. I utilize this 30-day pace uh, divided by the number of homes for sale, and that's how I come up with uh, months of inventory, this 3.3 months. So this number divided by that is uh, comes up to 3.3. And that means that uh, in a perfect situation with no new listings coming on, we would be out of homes for sale within just a little over three and a third months. So, um, and that's uh, another one of those graphics you kind of look at. You can see that months of inventory is, is slowly creeping up as we move into the summer market. And that's unusual in what we've seen the last couple of years. Is it unusual for uh, the marketplace the last several years? Probably not. Um, but uh, when we came off of COVID years, our, our minds kind of get a little amnesia and we remember what happened in the market back then, not previous to that. So it's very easy to catch yourself looking at, um, you know, what happened from COVID years and try to make some analysis of that. So, all right. So this was all home data. I will tell you that uh, I did this same analysis for or this same screen capture for all the subcategories, you know, new homes, existing homes, new condos and existing condo townhomes. Those graphics, we're not going to show this today on the show, but those are in the show graphics. And I'll have a link to that at the very end of the show, as well as in the uh, as we do each week in the show notes here. So another set of categories of information, again, this very, very few bar charts. In fact, there's probably none now moving on uh, until the end of the show. So stick with me. This is really, uh, trust me, it's good stuff. It's really good stuff. Um, but here we are with um, the number of homes listed weekly. Another graphic or another, I keep calling graphics because that's what I'm used to, another set of data that I follow uh, very, very closely. And when I see uh, that we've been adding existing home inventory each week, uh, in the in the numbers above 200 homes, except for July 7th, which we would have uh, said, okay, 4th of July was that previous week. That makes sense that we would have had a drop down to 155 versus 200 and some, uh, back up to 270 to 230. But now this past week, we didn't we we put less than 200 new um, properties, not new homes, but existing homes, into the uh, multiple listing service. So is this a sign that things are slowing down or is this yet another anomaly? I mean, we've had some some uh, warmer weather, maybe home sellers are starting to go on vacation, uh, things like that. So uh, we will watch this number, obviously, each week as we move into state fair territory and, and full-blown vacation time. Um, uh, again, I look at every subcategory as I enter this data each week. Uh, just so happened this past week, we did not see any new construction condominium or townhomes added to the MLS. And uh, that's not unusual, but uh, for the since May, there's only been another week, one other week that we had single digits, and that was back on the early part of June when we only had one added to the inventory level. So 247 total homes were added to the MLS this past week. That's uh, uh, kind of the way that broke down. Um, we'll look at how that looks uh, here on the pending side. Again, we start to look at 132 homes went under contract, uh, existing homes went under contract versus 172 or, you know, in that range. That's probably not too far out of normal for the existing home uh, category. Um, in fact, um, you know, it's at 195 total of all the homes. You know, we've been seeing uh, a little over 200 homes go into contract each week. So it's kind of a slowdown, it looks like, based on one week's data. Uh, in fact, it's the first week that we've seen since May uh, under 200 homes going under contract. So that could be a sign that, that the market is slowing uh, even more. But uh, again, one week's data does not uh, make an analysis here. Looking at weekly close sales, this is the pace of homes that, that actually close. And this one will fluctuate sometimes a little bit by the end of the month. Um, but really, uh, what you see here since May, we don't see a lot of fluctuation. You know, 160 homes or 159 homes in the existing home category closed or, or actually, you know, went went to closing. Home buyers are moving in, home sellers are moving out uh, this past week, and that's not too far off of the norms. We do have a little bit of a, a swing up and down as we go through the period of time. Um, uh, but 231 is kind of right on track. It's a little bit lower, and that's one of the reasons why we're starting to see uh, when I show you that graphic that has the uh, number of closed sales compared to last year. Uh, this is where this a lot of this graphic uh, information comes from. And um, 
you know, it kind of just gives us an idea that, you know, whether we're ahead or behind. Now, if we look at this same data set from a year to date closed sale um, uh, data set, uh, you can kind of see the story here. And the reason these are in yellow on the right hand side, just so you know that draws your attention, that's when we broke that 1,000 threshold. So we hit 4,000 homes closed, 5,000 homes closed, 6,000 and 7,000. Just as a just as a cue for me to kind of watch uh, the the weeks that that happens, and I actually find it down to the actual day when I produce the uh, uh, the uh, milestone reports here. But one of the things you want to look at here is the existing home category at 5,037. That's 2,400 homes. Um, you know that only leaves about 2,400 homes out of that 7,435 total sales be made up by uh, the condo townhome market and the existing or the resale properties and the new construction. So if you're looking at this graphic, you would see that um, the the far leader here of, of the category of closings is coming from our existing home sales. And that's pretty much true every every year, every month. Uh, new construction is is, you know, close behind. I wouldn't say it's close, close behind, but it's it's a respectable second place above the existing condo townhome market. Now I would say that looking back over a year over year, the existing condo townhome market this year has been a little bit slower. We haven't seen as many come on the market and uh, I would say in the last couple of years that that has been really the, the, the shining star of the subcategories as far as pace of sales. Uh, we still you know, sell by far more new homes and new and existing single family homes than anything else. But uh, this category has certainly seen a little bit of a drop this year. Um, and then the new construction condo townhomes um, is just kind of plugging right along there around that two to 300 mark um, uh, closing right now. One of the other graphics for, or one of the other stats that I look at each week is I pull a report that looks at how many homes had price reductions, price increases, came off the market, are bank owned. Uh, you know, and then the back on the market graphics. And we'll just kind of focus on a couple of these here. You got price reductions, again, uh, seeing, you know, 393, we're close to 400. As the market tends to soften a little bit, we're seeing more sellers out there making adjustments in price. And that's just what one thing we've seen. So if you imagine the graphic that I have, again, it shows this increase over time of, um, you know, this, the price reductions are increasing while at the same time, price increases are, are pretty much flat. So uh, more homes are having reductions to the tune of more than 10 times as many homes uh, this past week are having reductions than they are having price increases. Coming over here to the far right, uh, the back on market stat, uh, there were 50 homes that actually fell, fell apart, sales that fell off the, fell apart and made them come back onto the market or, or perhaps go off the market completely. Uh, it's a little bit of a jump this past week. We had 26%. Uh, we like to see that number closer to under 20%, but uh, this whole year has been around 23, 24%. So the harshness of the, uh, the, the mortgage interest rates environment, the affordability uh, is just kind of playing out in the fact that maybe some of these homes are going under contract and then uh, home buyers are either uh, falling out due to financing or maybe due to home inspections, uh, something to that effect. So just a, an interesting note this year, we'll be really talking more about this at year end when we when we do the year end recap. Open house activity, I do break that down by existing homes and new homes because it's pretty common for the builders to have uh, the new construction homes open. They might have, you know, seven or eight homes open, including the model. Uh, and homes in various stages by one or two agents. And so these numbers are traditionally much higher than the existing home inventory. The area where we're starting to see a, a pretty good increase in um, the open house activity is in the existing home area here. You can see that, you know, last week we had 345 homes open that were, um, uh, you know, resale properties. And that was a high uh, for that week, at least in this particular example. Uh, 311. So we're, we're seeing consistently over 300 homes off and on. When you see a little drop like this of only 139, obviously, again, that was affected by uh, the 4th of July week. You also see a little, saw a little bit of a dip in the new construction. So 
total overall open houses this past week or, or this come this weekend right now we're just over 1170 um you know it's we have not hit that 2000 or 15 or 1200 i should the, the 1200 mark yet um but we would certainly expect to see that as the summer months come on and and if we do see a slower market we should see 12 and 1300 homes total uh being held open because that's one of the the best ways uh, that, that homeowners feel as though they're able to get their home, uh, you know, out there on the market. So uh, as far as one uh, a different graphic here, this is the off market AVM analysis. And I don't talk a lot about this. You know, I take a, a typical Des Moines two story and uh, let's just kind of go down through this. Uh, the monthly CMA, I do a monthly CMA on a typical Des Moines two story. And this particular one is coming in around that $335,000 mark. It was the same, um, you know, the end of last month. Um, so you can see this stays the same for a period of three or four weeks uh, because it's only updated on a monthly basis. And I just bring that same number down each week. Um, RPR, which is Realtor Property Resource, produces an AVM each week. And uh, occasionally that will not make any changes it tends to go in two or three week increments and you can see here that's pretty typical two weeks two weeks two weeks yeah all the way down there on about a two week increment so i could see that uh next week we may not see any change in their valuation again this is an avm a, a, a third party's analysis based on data of what the home's value is the next line over here is the all uh, ever present Zestimo, uh, Zillow Zestimate. And uh, this one will change sometimes weekly. Um, although you can see here the last uh, couple of weeks before this week, it was kind of staying close at 326.4. Um, what this tells me is, is you know, they're constantly uh, monitoring their markets as well. They have, they bring in just like Zillow and, and CoreLogic, they bring in. Uh, non MLS sales as well, and, and try to analyze kind of what the market is doing. And so they came in this week at 328, which was up a little bit. Uh, CoreLogic, which is the probably the one of the most used uh, AVM services by mortgage lenders out there. So if you ever ever to go uh, take out a, a second mortgage or even possibly a mortgage, and they uh, opted to do a no appraisal review. In other words, they're going based, just based on AVM values. It's probably this company, at least one, is going to do the bulk of that business. And you can see that um, you know there was quite a drop this past week. You know, went from 317, uh, 473 two weeks ago to 317, 485. So it's kind of slowly increasing to all of a sudden seeing a six thousand dollar drop. And uh, you know, unfortunately, we don't see what the data is in each of these ABMs that brings that uh, those sales up or down. I can see it obviously when I do the CMA of what I find, um, but it's always interesting to see when uh, we see a, a major raise or a major major drop in the, the ABM values. There, this last column is essentially all these uh, numbers averaged out. So it's an average of the ABM. And it just kind of gives me a baseline. And again, you've seen these graphics in the past where I've shown you like it looks like a spaghetti chart and it's got a, a dark, thick line. That's the average. And you can see that uh, this Des Moines 2 story, if you were to take into account all of the different sources, that valuation would be around 324, 279. Now, there's not a lot of merit in that number as much as the trend that it creates over time. So when you're looking at uh, four different sources, and they're all over the place, but then you can do the average. You can kind of see if overall things are trending up or trending down. And um, I'll, I'll share that with you guys here in a couple of weeks uh, with uh, what that actually looks like. So um, so that's really the show. I, I will remind you that uh, I told you before I have the uh, same uh, analysis of uh, the homes for sale that I showed you at the very beginning for existing homes, existing condo townhomes, new homes, and new condo townhomes. They're actually in the week show at the download. Go to Des Moines Market Values com and then click the link to download show graphics, and they'll be in this week's show notes there. So next week is the end of July, so I will I should have time to put together a uh, a base end of July report. Uh, be on the road traveling a little bit next week, so I may not uh, have it completely done. If that's the case, we'll maybe come back and revisit some of these graphics from um, that we talked about today. Otherwise, uh, we will 
basically see you all again next week with the end of July if, if I have time to do that. If not, again, we'll figure something else out. So, again, thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. Um, you know, every week, if you enjoy the content that I provide and you find it valuable, please hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, and then also hit that notification bell on YouTube. Your support helps this channel grow. I'm trying to grow my, my channel base, and uh, you guys are coming through in spades. Thank you so much. We're starting to see more visitors. And it'll be interesting to see this week if I have as many people watch this week because there weren't as many graphics. So. Tell me if you're a geek, leave that, you know, leave me a comment. If you are a geek and you love the show or you say if you absolutely want to see the graphics every single time, let me know that as well. So anyway, we'll talk to you all again next week. Stay safe and stay cool out there.